Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, hey, my name is Mo. I'm a pharmacist, toxicologist and safety assessor. In this channel we talk about the skincare, science behind skincare and safety of skincare. So I try my best to provide you with the best information to have a peace of mind when you are using your personal care product. So if that sounds interesting to you, please don't forget to subscribe and join this community. So this video is going to be interesting, fun and educational at the same time. So. Uh, we are going to react to TikTok and try to bust some myths related to skincare and safety of skincare, of course, and skincare products. And of course, I asked you on my community tab here on YouTube, and you guys voted for the reaction to TikTok, so that's what we are going to do. So I will move a little bit to the side so I can display what I'm watching here, and I can give you my full reaction to the video. So. Uh, we are going to react to four TikTok. I will use my laptop here down down there to react to the video and then I'll give you my feedback and what kind of information in this TikTok, whether it's like a correct information or a misinformation. So starting with the first TikTok, let's watch it together and then I will give you the feedback. Okay, so this is a typical case of fear mongering with uh, a sprinkle of, let's say, uh, clean beauty and uh, chemophobia, the af being afraid of chemical compounds without knowing anything about their safety or their toxicity profile. So. Let's break down the points that she mentioned. So first of all, I wrote it down here on a paper so I don't give any kind of misinformation or anything. So I give specific numbers so everything will be as clear as possible. She first of all tried to say that the uh, EU uh, banned those which are uh, oxybenzone, homosalate and octocrylene, which is not correct. Uh, the, in the EU they are allowed and I'm currently using the product that is a sunscreen produced in the EU and have all three filters. So, so the second point she mentioned that the US using the same filters with two to three times higher concentration than the EU and that is totally incorrect and I will write down on this side of the screen the correct uh, concentration of those uh, filters. So for the uh, oxybenzone and the FDA is 6% uh, the, um, the top concentration allowed in sunscreen and the EU is 6%. So for homosalate it's 15 in the FDA for the US of course and 10% for the EU that is not 2 to 3%. For the octocrylene, it's 10% in the FDA for the US and 10% in the EU, so completely equal. And there is other, other kind of, let's say, problematic according to Clean Beauty sunscreen, like for example, avobenzone, which is in the FDA is allowed up to 3%, but for the EU it's allowed for 5%, which is almost the double, and both of them are considered safe. So those are the uh, mentioned points. For the third point mentioned in this video as well, which is the carrot seed oil, uh, oils in general provide very minimum protection against uh, the UVB through SPF rating. For example, she mentioned that carrot seed oil provide 30 to 40 SPF as I remember from the video but actually there is a study in 2021 uh, I will put the uh, name of the paper here and uh, they found that oils in general gave SPF ranging from 2 to 4 SPF and that's it they don't provide any significant SPF to your skin or a sun protection factor so they won't protect you from UVB or UVA at all so now we are jumping to the next video, which is 
a, a sunscreen test, which was trending in the last few weeks, let's say, um, testing how oily is the sunscreen by placing some sunscreen on the, uh, let's say, uh, the patting paper, which absorbed generally in oil used uh, to absorb excess oil from your skin or when you try to mattify your makeup. It's sold everywhere, clean and clear, have some uh, plotting uh, paper to help you with controlling your oil. So they are using it to, let's say, uh, assume how oily and not oily the product uh, or, or the sunscreen is. Let's stop. Testing sunscreen oil levels so you don't have to. This is after one hour, two hours, three hours, and six hours. We would recommend Kavu and Medihil for dry skin people and Derma B for oily skin. Okay, so I explained the concept of the video, but let's say a few things. So they are trying to prove a concept or an idea with the wrong concept. This plotting paper is made from a special type of uh, cellulose, which is, like we know, a chain of uh, sugar, a polymer of sugar. And it's very well and it's very good at absorbing any excess fluid, especially sometimes if it's uh, treated in a specific way, it absorbs uh, oil very well. So absorbing oil or any oil-loving uh, uh, compound or ingredient in the sunscreen does not represent how the sunscreen will, let's say, perform on your skin. If some sunscreen contain a lot of oil, but they are formulated well, they don't have to be heavy or oily. It's all back to formulation. This is only showing a very simple concept in physics and chemistry, which is diffusion. When we put a, a, a compound or a, a matter, let's say, with high concentration of a specific compound, on a paper or on a medium that allow the diffusion from the higher concentration part to the lower concentration. So in general in chemistry, uh, matter move or concentration of a map of a single compound or a single ingredient move from the higher concentration part to the lower concentration part. In this case, the amount of ingredients that is in the sunscreen are high and they are moving through this medium, which is the paper, to the side of the paper, which contain a very low concentration of the same compound, which contain literally zero. So it's just uh, showing a very simple concept of chemistry and physics, which is diffusion. And lastly, our skin is not a paper. So let's say we apply sunscreen on a paper, it will not perform at the same as on skin because it is tested on people's skin not on the paper. Now to video number three, we're starting now. It's talking about the uh, vitamin C test. It was trending like a few months ago, but I will cover it and explain it right now and tell you what's the point of this test and what is actually showing. So this video or this test let's say showing a very fun and very interesting concept of a very basic known uh, reaction in chemistry which is the reduction oxidating uh, reaction and this is just a very simple uh, very well known very common type of reaction in chemistry it happens between a reducing agent and oxidizing agent and the reducing agent, agent reduce the uh, the other um, molecule to have a different type of uh, physical appearance. So that's what actually happened. So they are testing if the product contains vitamin C, which is the reducing aging, uh, agent uh, and also considered an antioxidant. So the vitamin C is the reducing agent, antioxidant, and they are using iodine, which is uh, the compound that the reduction happened uh, on it. So it will transform its appearance from being brown in the liquid solution to uh, colorless, from iodine to iodide, from uh, I2 to I1. So you might say, Mo, well, this reaction is very good. It's showing the, if there is a vitamin C in the product or not, if it's active or not. But this uh, reaction covered only one type of vitamin C, which is, does not exist in all the skincare products which is the existence of L-ascorbic acid, the 
pure form or the uh, true form of uh, vitamin C, uh, L-ascorbic acid, but other skincare products contain other derivatives of uh, vitamin C, with which uh, there are a lot of derivatives, some with uh, very well uh, backed by data, some not very much, but in general it shows only if the product contains vitamin C or not, and sometimes the vitamin C can be encapsulated, so it will not do the uh, reduction uh, reaction. So basically, it's not very accurate way to represent if the product is going to be effective or not. So that's aside. There is a lot of other derivatives, like for example, uh, ascorbyl palmitate, for example, magnesium ascorbyl palmitate. All of those, or THD, all of those are a very uh, diverse type of. Uh, derivative of vitamin C and they can have a result without having to do this uh, reducing uh, reaction because uh, they need to be converted into uh, your skin by your skin uh, uh, let's say uh, enzyme capacity to transform them from the derivative form to the ascorbic acid form which is going to be the active form and do the good job for your skin. So basically, if you try this reaction at home, it can be fun, but it definitely can show you the, um, let's say, the uh, effectiveness of the product, and it will not be a very good, robust way to detect if the product is going to work for you or not. Now to video number four, and we are going to react to this dermatologist talking about paraben, which is, of course, the most hated type of ingredients in the clean beauty and uh, let's see what we uh, he have to say what super popular skincare ingredient should you absolutely avoid? Here in the United States, our skincare products are filled with chemicals that are banned in Europe. And some of the worst of these are parabens. Parabens have been shown to have weak estrogenic effects, basically acting as hormone mimickers. Five parabens are banned in Europe, and they're not recommended to be used in the nappy area of children under the age of three. And parabens have been shown to impact the quality of your sperm, making them move slowly. So that's a lot to unpack. If you want guys to, if you want me to do like let's say a very detailed video on parabens and the safety and go to the nitty gritty stuff, let me know in the comments. But in general, uh, there's a few points that is mentioned. First of all, that the US have a very weak regulation when it comes to cosmetics compared to the EU and the EU ban, let's say 2,500 uh, compounds that are not banned in the US but the US and EU have a different approach to regulating cosmetics. In the EU they said they have a very defined line that okay those compounds should not exist in a cosmetics. Those 2500 compounds that exist on the banned list in the EU contain ingredients that should not be existing in a cosmetic product. One of them, let's say there are some corticoid, uh, they are which are drugs that shouldn't exist in a cosmetic product. There are some uh, heart medication, hypertensive medication. Uh, let's say there are some uh, alpha and beta blockers, which are also medication used for different kind of illnesses, from hypertension to treating migraine, etc. There's a uh, jet fuel things that realistically shouldn't exist in the cosmetic product and the EU were like, okay, I will write all of those down and put them in a banned list. Uh, in the US, it's not like this. They have a smaller list, like 10, 20, I think, uh, compounds. And those are shouldn't be used because they were before using cosmetics like arsenic and stuff like this and they are written down in this smaller list. But of course in the US they are not allowed to uh, use of drugs in cosmetics or allowed to use any type of let's say jet fuel in a cosmetics because it will not be allowed to be placed on the market if the product was tested by the FDA on a general checkup and it will be retrieved and the company would be fined and there will be like let's say would say uh, fines and court involved in the situation so saying that the eu have a greater list and the us have a smaller list is just a way to make you fear 
the product in the US that they are inferior compared to the EU products. The second point in this video, he said that the EU bans parapins. Parapins are not banned in the EU. They banned five parapins that are not in the first place used in cosmetics. They are used in uh, elsewhere uh, industries and those are banned to be used anywhere else uh, anymore in the uh, in any industry in the EU. So basically saying those five without specifying those five members of the parapins family and where are they used and when are they used before the ban is a very sneaky way to spread fear and say okay all parapins are scary, all parapins are going to harm us. The third point is that parapins have an estrogenic or endocrine disrupting uh, ability and that is actually correct. But when we look at the dosage that the studies showed that those uh, members of this family of ingredients or preservatives are having an endocrine disruptor, they were, the concentration was so unrealistic in the animal studies that we would never be able to mimic that in real life scenario even if you are using 20 products a day. Basically, uh, they had a very, very weak uh, endocrine disrupting ability or estro estrogenic ability and that is very let's say uh, put a protective layer for you to use them for the rest of your life without having any fear of an endocrine disruptor effect so those are were shown to be uh, more than 1000 times weaker than the phytoestrogen phytoestrogen are compound we found in a uh, type of legumes and beans like soya beans and we ingest those and they have a 1000 times more stronger effect to affect the estrogenic receptor in our body so we eat soybeans most of the time we don't have any risk of cancer or any type of risk because it's considered food and it's considered safe so we are ingesting things that are considered one hundred thousand times stronger than the things that we apply on our skin in very minuscule uh, concentration and we should fear those that we apply on the skin but we shouldn't fear the things that we eat so it's not very a good logic uh, way to think about the risk and exposure so just mentioning those kind of stuff is unfortunately and of course coming from I don't I think he is a plastic surgeon and he has been spreading a lot of misinformation lately so this kind of information is going to push the consumer away from a very safe very affordable very effective kind of a product to a very sketchy kind of product that are not very well um, uh, let's say secured when it comes to preservative system, when it comes to effectiveness, when it comes to stability testing, when it comes to microbiology testing, so using other kind of not very strong preservative put the patient or put the consumer at risk of getting let's say an infection or any kind of other uh, side effect or adverse effect that can literally threat uh, people's life, especially when it comes to people with weakened immune system. So this kind of information I really, really hate as a toxicologist and safety assessor of personal care product. I really get angry when I see those kind of videos, but uh, the point is, please, whenever you see a shocking, let's say, a video with a lot of uh, very bold claim, rise a red flag and do your own research. And, ask other experts in the industry to have a very well-rounded opinion on this topic. So that was my video guys, I hope you guys enjoyed it and found it useful. Please don't forget to watch the video till the end and share it with your friends so we can spread the knowledge and fight those misinformation. If you want part 2 of this video, please let me know in the comments and again, please stay safe and i see you in the next video. Bye!